I'm very excited to be a positive person right now because I just sat down for 30 minutes talking about all of the things I regretted about my wedding, but I only did that just to help anyone out there who has an upcoming wedding in the wedding planning process because I know how crazy it is to just be like, I've never done this before, I know nothing, help. <laughs> and really the only way you learn is through people who have been there, done that. So I got married a little over a month ago and I have a lot of little tips, like a lot of little things. I'm so happy I did. A lot of things I didn't even think twice about, but I'm like, oh my gosh, that like, totally made the night. And I would like to give you guys my wealth of knowledge. I am literally kidding. I, 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 I'm not an expert by any means at all, you guys know, but I did learn a thing or two. I'm gonna have a playlist linked down below, by the way, of like my entire wedding planning process because I started vlogging from the very beginning all the way up until the end. So I'll have that below, but let's just get right into all of the things I am very happy I did in regards to my wedding, starting with the biggest one. This one was a little controversial. I got a little bit of hate for this, not hiring a wedding planner. And in today's day and age, I don't know what it is, but you get married and you just have a million and one people telling you what you have to do. And it's just, I just from the very beginning recognized, no, I don't, I don't have to. Like I, I just was realizing like, okay, that might work for you, but it not, might not work for me. And that's the beauty of a wedding. It's going to look so different for every single person based on your preferences, based on just <laughs> honestly, like how much you care about the day. Like some people put in, you know, 100 hours into planning, others put 500. It just, it's going to vary. And when I first said I was not hiring a wedding planner, I got a lot of people who were just not the nicest saying, oh, like, yeah, you know, you, you, you have to do it. This is going to be a disaster. You can't plan your own wedding. It's just not going to be as good. And I got a little sassy, I think like, I don't know, a couple of months ago in a vlog, I, I wasn't trying to hate on the wedding industry and to hate on wedding planners at all. It is a wonderful job, a wonderful career. I think that sounds like so much fun. Not to mention, it takes a certain skill set to plan an entire wedding, right? But I think my response to that was just based on what people have been telling me that I couldn't do it. I just wanna sit here and say, yeah, you can. In today's day and age, like you don't need a wedding planner. Is it going to be a wonderful help? And is it going to, you know, really take your wedding to the next level? I'm sure. But when I was looking at prices, I mean, I, you know, a couple thousand extra dollars, like that's a significant amount of money for me at least. And I realized, okay, I'm a former reporter. I know how to make calls. I don't see why I absolutely need a planner. I do have to say a big caveat. The venue I chose, Dries Pavilion in Covington, Kentucky, which is basically Cincinnati. If you know, you know, it's a five minute walk across to downtown Cincinnati. They come with a day of coordinator. That is something I don't care who you are or how great you are. I feel like you really, 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 really need just someone to make sure the day is running smoothly. And a lot of venues do come with that. So I had my day of coordinator and I realized I think I'm capable of planning this wedding myself. And not to mention, it was a lot of fun for me to discover each and every vendor on my own. Like for a wedding planner, something that's really helpful is they'll give you a list, they'll give you recommendations, but it was really cool for me to go on Instagram and, and you know, search hashtags and find the vibes I liked for different things. Like I just, I really enjoyed doing it on my own, if that makes sense. And it's just gonna look different for everyone, but I know people were curious about like how it would all come together without a wedding planner. And I'm just, I'm really happy about it. Like I, I personally feel like I didn't need one. And that was just the decision that worked for me. Also, I really wanted to save money. <laughs> Another controversial decision, no registry. I had so many people who were like, oh my gosh, you have to do a registry. Like the amount of people who, when I said I wasn't doing a registry, just I thought they were gonna have heart attacks. But here's the thing, Zach and I live together, right? So we lived together before marriage. We just bought a house. We have all of those little house things. Like there are certainly things we still need to buy, such as furniture. I'm not putting furniture on my registry. And I, I honestly, I felt the peer pressure. I went to go make a registry and then I realized, I was putting things on it I don't need. Like, I don't need another pot, I don't need another pan. Like, those are just things I, I have. And oh my gosh, I was thinking like, okay, like maybe I'll get like upgraded pots and pans, like how wonderful. No, like I really just don't need it. Like, I just don't. And I ended up deleting the whole registry because I thought, okay, if someone is so against giving cash as a gift, which I feel like in my generation is just the most normal simple thing ever, but if someone's so against it, they don't have to gift us anything. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. Like seriously, people just 
just showing up meant the world to me. It really did, especially at a lot of people coming from out of town. I don't need gifts. I just don't. And like, Creating a registry for me was cr like causing more stress of, I don't want and I don't need any of these things. Like, oh my gosh. So I just deleted it and it was what it was. Like, I'm, I'm really, really, really happy with that decision because I'm happy we just, we didn't end up getting pressured into doing it and then just picking out a bunch of things we don't need. This one, I'm really happy we did a private cake cutting. Sometimes at weddings they'll announce it, but for me, and I've talked about this in previous vlogs, I don't like being in the spotlight. Oh my gosh, Clancy, that's so ironic. Like you used to be a reporter and now you, you know, put your big head out there on the internet. I don't know what I just said, but I understand it probably looks like I am this huge extrovert who just loves the spotlight, but that is truly not the case at all. Like I am just not about that. So to have as many private moments throughout the night, like I just 10 out of 10 recommend. And when it was presented to me, like they asked, like, do you want to have a private cake cutting or have it announced? I was like, yes, private. And it was a cute little moment, especially because, fun fact, I was allergic to our cake. I have a dairy and an egg allergy, and sure, I could have found a cake that was dairy and egg free. I just knew I don't care, I didn't care. Like Zach, who was the king of desserts and didn't even have one bite of our wedding cake, because you're just so busy, you're talking to people. I knew the last thing on my mind was gonna be food. It just really wasn't like top of mind for me. And so I just, I was like, all right, like I'm gonna give the people a cake that has eggs and dairy in it. So when it came time to cut and we realized we had to do like for the photo, like the, you know, the, the picture, I was like, Zach, what do I do? I'm allergic. And I also have a really, really, really bad tree nut allergy. So I really do have a fear of desserts because contamination is pretty common or at least it's possible. And I have anaphylaxis. So he was like, just, just take a really small bite. So I did, I took like the smallest bite possible and it was just like a cute little moment. So I 10 out of 10 recommend creating as many like small moments between the two of you as possible, especially because I barely talked to Zach on our wedding day, it feels like, like once everyone showed up, I, and, but the thing is like, I have no regrets about this. Like I, it's not a regret of mine. It was always gonna end up like that. I mean, I have family coming from out of town who I haven't seen in a year. I'm not gonna be like canoodling in a corner with Zach, like alone as these people who I love so much and I haven't seen are just there. Like I see Zach every day. So obviously Zach and I were together on our wedding, but for the most part, like once, you know, people started arriving, we kind of just went from group to group to group separately. And I, I personally, like, I just don't really regret it. Like, I hope that doesn't sound bad, but I expected that and I'm happy. <laughs> the first look, this is a very controversial slash personal choice. You know, some people want to wait until they walk down the aisle to have the groom look at you. For me personally, I was like, all right, Zach is not gonna be emotional no matter what. And timeline wise, it made so much more sense to do a first look. I felt like we barely had enough time to speak to all of our guests and loved ones at the wedding as it was. And I needed to be there during the cocktail hour. Like I am so happy we were able to talk to people during the cocktail ceremony. If you don't do a first look, a lot of times you have to kind of just skip your whole cocktail hour because that's when you take all of your portraits and your photos. It, that, I, no, like especially now that I know how fast the night flew by and how quick it all happened, I am so happy we were able to have those extra moments, that whole extra hour with our guests because I feel like I barely got to speak to everyone. Like your wedding day is just the biggest mind trip of just like, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Like it's just, it's crazy. So for me personally, and just wanting to be with my guests, I'm so happy we did the first look. And then an added benefit to that, I mean, walking down the aisle, I'm not really not like a huge emotional person. I felt the emotions of just seeing him up at the altar. Like, or I keep saying altar. We did not get married in a church, whatever at the, wherever we were at the front of the gazebo. I can't even imagine how much crazier it would have been had we not done the first look. Honestly, the first look was really not emotional for us at all. It just wasn't. I feel like I just was very aware of the cameras and this and that and just the moment and we weren't saying vows for our first look. So it just, it was kind of just like, hey, like you look nice. And he really did, like he really looked amazing. Another thing, and this actually wasn't written down, I'm adding it right now on the spot. I'm so happy we said our vows at our ceremony. It just made it so special because if we didn't say our own vows, and this is just my own personal like you know experience, it just wouldn't have been as special. It was really special to have all of our loved ones there. We had a 
I mean, I don't want to say a small wedding, but a relatively small wedding. I think we had around 115 people. And it was just very special for them to all be there and for us to say our thing, you know, in front of everyone. So I am really happy that we said our vows. I was against it. Zach was for it. I'm very happy he convinced me to do that because I was just nervous and I really was nervous. Like, I actually like thought I was gonna like pass out up there. I just was like, I had to like do like a deep breath right before even saying the vows. I was hoping I would be able to even get through it. I did, luckily. And it just, it was a very special moment. Random, but I'm very happy I had my thank you cards ready to go. I had already pre-ordered them. So by the time I woke up the day after the wedding, like they were sitting there, I ended up writing them and mailing them out within just a few days. I know that can feel a little psychotic. People in one of my last vlogs were like, you have like a year to do that. Like why, why'd you rush? I was just full of so much gratitude though for every single person who came and gave us a card. The, you know, the dollar amount inside the card, I can't even explain to you how irrelevant that was. I mean, trust me, like I was so grateful. Like I can still think in my head, like I can't believe this person like, you know, was so generous, but truly just the card and just being there, like it just meant the world to me and I just needed these humans to know it. So I got those thank you cards out very fast just because I was so grateful and I think if I hadn't pre-ordered them and had them ready to go, it could have been one of those things that I really procrastinated. I just didn't want to end up in one of those scenarios. So I got it out very fast. And I just think it really helped doing it before the wedding when I was already in the swing of things. Oh, well, I didn't even remember I had on here. I'm very happy we had a relatively small wedding so that I could speak to each person. When you are thinking about your guest list, guys, I can't even emphasize enough Every person you add, so first of all, every person you add is a lot of money. I can't remember how much ours was like per plate. I really don't know. But let's say per plate is like a hundred bucks. I'm just doing a random number. Okay, so you invite three extra people to your wedding. That's 300 extra dollars plus the, you know, the added tax and service charge to each and every plate. It's a lot of money. But more importantly than that, each and every person is another person you're conversing with, right? And I don't even know how people who have huge weddings that are 300 people, like how do you talk to everyone and have a meaningful conversation? Like that is crazy. I was overwhelmed with 115 people. So yeah, really think about your guest list because that's gonna take up your time and every single minute on your wedding day is so meaningful and significant. So like, just really think about that. I'm really happy we had everything in one place. I didn't even know this was a thing until I met Zach and I started going to his friend's weddings where, so I grew up Catholic. I only ever knew of Catholic weddings where you have it in the church and then you go to the reception after. And there was nothing wrong with that. I promise you, I'm not hating on that at all. But when I first started going to weddings where they get married, we go to a cocktail hour in the same location and then we party all night in the same location. I was like, this is mind blowing because you don't have to worry about like, Ubers or getting from the church to the reception and then the gap of time in between. Do we eat lunch? Like, it's just, I am so happy. It was just all in one, in one space, one night. Like it just, it was so perfect. And I'm very happy I did that because that was a controversial thing. I really had to hammer it home to my mother that I was not going to be getting married in a Catholic church. And listen, at the end of the day, I am very much like, what's the word? Like I acquiesce, like I'm very like, okay, like whatever you want. Like I really am like that. This was something, it just was non-negotiable. I don't go to Catholic church. Like I don't, I haven't gone to a Catholic mass in so many years. Why, why would I get married in a Catholic church? Like I don't really identify as Catholic. So it just, it wouldn't have made sense. Like I would have been a fraud if anything. Like, so anyway. I did not do that. The location, I am so happy. So we chose Dries Pavilion and it just, it was beautiful. And I felt like with this location, so funnily enough, I was actually leaning toward an entirely different venue. It's called Cooper's Creek. It's about 20 minutes north of downtown Cincinnati. One of the biggest reasons I chose Dries Pavilion was one, it was close to the airport and it was gonna be easier for guests to get there. And then two, I thought the downtown Cincinnati view would be so special for people who are from out of town, which was a majority of my guest list. You know, my family doesn't live here in Cincinnati. So I, I just thought it would be so special for them. I've seen that view a million and one times. As a reporter, that was like our signature live shot location. Like, let's just show off downtown Cincinnati and the view. And you know, I'm obviously used to it, but I thought for guests, it would be really cool. And I was right. It was, I feel like everyone was gravitating toward outside and looking at the view. And I just thought it was almost like its own little, like activity, like let's go outside and take pictures in front of the view. So that was awesome. And then the fireworks was like, 
that was just insane. The fact that the fireworks were going off because of the Taylor Swift concert that was right across the river and it was 4th of July weekend. We had fireworks coming from a couple of different places and it just, it was absolutely magical and I'm so happy. I chose that venue. I regretted it at one point just because with all of the Taylor Swift traffic, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I should have picked somewhere so far from downtown Cincinnati because it's just gonna be craziness. And no, I shouldn't have even worried. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. Ooh, this is honestly my most controversial decision probably. No flowers. Yep, you heard me right. I decided to have no flowers at my wedding, which Oh my gosh, in the wedding industry is, it's a sin. It really is. Like the amount of people who could not believe and could not accept that, that this was a decision we made. Listen, I'm not really a flowers person. Do I think they're beautiful? Yes. Do I think they're so expensive though? Yes. And they die the next day. And I've just, it's just something and it's just personal preference. I've never walked into a wedding and admired the flowers. I, I simply just haven't and it's all personal preference. You might walk into the wedding and that's the first thing you notice. Like look at these orchids or whatever. I don't, I really am not a flower person. I don't even know the types. Lilies or, there's something that starts with a P that's really pretty. Petunias? I don't know. But anyway, I decided once I was looking at the fact that, oh my gosh, flowers cost thousands of dollars? Like what? And I was thinking in my head like, okay, so you don't have to spend $5,000 on flowers. You could only spend, you know, 500 if you want. What's the point in just getting like, okay, four flowers here and then three there and then four, like, it's not even gonna make that much of an impact and I'm not paying for that. So I made the decision, we're not gonna have them. And I thought our venue and everything looked beautiful anyway. I do have to say like the venue had like beautiful little decorations as well, just naturally there. So that's a pro tip if you're looking at a pro tip as if I'm a pro, but that's a tip. If you're looking at venues, like try to find one that's just naturally beautiful so you don't have to add to it. So you don't have to go crazy with decorations. So yeah, like I, I just, I, I didn't see the value in it and I'm so happy we did not waste our money on that because it just was not worth it for me. And I'm just, I'm really, 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 really happy about that. I think with the wedding industry, there are certain things where people are like, you must do this and you must do that, of course. And it's, it's like, what? No, like I, I actually don't have to. So I felt like I was almost like revolting against the wedding industry. It's just, things add up and I was not willing to drop thousands on flowers or even hundreds. The one thing I have to say is I did end up getting a bouquet. I, this was kind of against my will. I was planning on going to Kroger the day of and just picking up like a random, bunch of flowers. My mom made me go to a florist and have them make me a bouquet, which I am so grateful for. It was so beautiful. I picked out pinks and I thought it was very vibrant. Give me the hot pinks. Like I'm a, I'm a color girl. No bridesmaids. This was a very controversial one at the time. I feel like I've had a lot of decisions looking back on it where people just react. I don't even know. Like with weddings, it's like controversial. But yeah, I decided way back when that we were not going to do wedding parties. I wanted our wedding to be as simple and as untraditional as possible. I mean, it was a very traditional wedding, but I just didn't want to have to do these things. I don't know. So yeah, we decided no bridesmaids and it worked out just fine. Like I still saw all my friends and loved ones at my wedding. Like it just, it was the least controversial thing ever. Oh, I didn't put this on the list, but I ended up doing a first dance with my dad. You guys know originally I nixed this because my dad is just not like an emotional person, a dancer. It's just not in our DNA. And I was just like, I really don't need to do that. I'm happy I did. I mean, the actual moment, I, like we were kind of just like, it wasn't emotional at all. We were just like chatting and talking and I told the DJ to cut it off after 60 seconds, I'm pretty sure. But we got some really cool photos out of it, I thought. Like I thought those were really special photos. Like if, if for nothing else, just for the photos, like I am so happy I have those. Yeah, so it was nice. Just some random things. I'm really happy we did a Coney bar, which is like a basically just a snack at the end of the wedding. Obviously people have their dinner and then they have dessert, but you know, especially if you're going to the after party, you need a little fuel. And I did have multiple people say they ate from the Coney bar. I could put a picture on the screen, by the way, of what a Coney is. Um, I think it's like a Cincinnati thing, but yeah, people enjoyed it. And I thought that was a cute little idea. This one, oh my gosh, the amount of people who have said guest books are just a waste. They wish they didn't do it. What? I love our guest book. I got it very last minute. I got it the week of the wedding because I wasn't even going to do one because everyone says it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's just a waste of space. I cherish our guest book so much. I hadn't even looked at it until like a week after the wedding. People wrote 
like the kindest messages and just special messages inside jokes like I don't know I just really 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 appreciated the guest book and then the other thing is we did a photo booth uh, oh my gosh I'm so happy we did the photo booth first of all we got a copy of every single photo that was taken which is just so funny to look back on also I didn't realize our photo booth place came with like this little book and then people wrote messages in the book, like next to the photos, which I thought was just so cool and like super special. So I am really happy we did that photo booth. Like I think it's nice at a wedding to have an activity. Like obviously you have the dance floor, but like something else, like just something that's just fun for people to do. And then they get a keepsake because I don't even know, like what is it like wedding favors? Like no one, no one keeps the wedding favors. The photo booth pictures though, I know as a wedding guest, like I, I love those. Speaking of photos. So this is the one thing I really did invest in. I am so grateful. I mean, this is the only tangible part of a wedding day. It all goes by so fast. Like you don't even remember most things. You don't even like, I, I don't even remember like the food barely, like we didn't have the cake, like so many things. But the wedding photos, like once it's all said and done, like waking up the next morning, I just wanted to like see like, what did the wedding look like? And I had a very specific like vibe in mind and everyone's gonna have different. I feel like you can kind of go two different ways with this. Some people like the dark and sultry, which is beautiful, but not my vibe at all. I like bright, but still true to life. I don't like it to be too bright and airy, like it, where it feels like a painting. I wanted it to be on the bright side, but still true to life. And my photographer, I had actually found when I was doing a branding shoot a couple of years ago, and she also does weddings. So I booked her. I'm really happy. Like I was familiar with her and comfortable with her because on your wedding day, you spend so much time with them and she was just amazing. And I'm really happy I invested in photos because this wasn't a budget like photographer at all. Like it was honestly one of the most expensive parts of my wedding. But for me personally, it was worth every penny. I'm also really happy we booked a videographer because it's so cool to actually see like a video. I'm personally still waiting on getting the raw footage sent to me. Um, so I still haven't like seen all the raw footage and the speeches and all of that, but having the video is just like so special and so worth it. I've seen a lot of people say they regret not hiring a videographer, which is crazy how much wedding prices change. I looked on his site uh, just a few weeks ago. His prices have gone up like $2,000 since I booked, which is nuts. I also wanna add another little tip. Find a videographer that will give you the raw footage because that six, seven, eight minute little highlight video they create for you is super nice, but you're gonna want the video. You're gonna want the full speeches and just those little moments you didn't get to see. So definitely make sure they'll include the raw footage. Zach's suit color was something I'm so happy with. Like I just think our photos look so cool and classy. Nothing wrong with a black suit, but I don't know, I, Zach chose like a cream dinner jacket and it just looked so classy with a little spice, right? Like just a little different than what you normally see. Nothing crazy, I'd been talking about it in vlogs leading up where it sounded like he chose like a pink suit because I kept saying it was something very different, but it wasn't anything crazy. It's just, I haven't been to any weddings where the groom had on that cream dinner jacket and it, it just it just looks so good. I'm really happy I got a second dress for the after party slash going out to the bars after because showing up in a ball gown was just not gonna be an option. I can't even imagine like if that, I mean, for someone who doesn't really like to be in the spotlight, that would have been asking for it a lot. Like I can't, I can't imagine, not to mention, I don't know what I'll ever do with my dress, but my dress is in perfect condition. And I, I do have friends who went to the bars in their dress after and it's just like black on the bottom. So I'm happy my dress is in good condition, but also it was good to just be able to have a more comfy outfit. Transportation, I have to give my mom so much props for this because I originally wasn't even thinking of this. Like for all of the guests who were staying at the hotel, I was like, they could just get Ubers like from the venue to the hotel. It's like a 12 minute drive. But she insisted on booking a transportation service, like a big bus. And I'm so happy. I mean, that would have been kind of crazy now that I think about it, every single person getting Ubers from the wedding venue. So I'm really happy she thought of that, especially considering our guests were coming from out of town. Like it was good to like have them covered. So I'm happy about that. And then I'm just so happy I didn't make the day bigger than what it was. From the beginning, I recognized this for what it is, a day, a day. It's literally a day and I just think putting so much stress and pressure for it to be the best day of your life and this and that is just, it's a way to get disappointed in my opinion. Like I, I just, I, I just, I never like fell into the hole. Like this is going to be the biggest day of my life. I must spend like this amount of money. No, like I, I didn't want to waste a bunch of money on just one day. I wanted it to be wonderful and it was, 
And I'm here to tell you that even if you're doing it on a little more of a budget, like not doing flowers and this and that, it can still be a wonderful day. And I also do want to say like my wedding definitely wasn't a budget wedding. Like, gosh, I was cutting corners left and right and it still wasn't cheap at all. Like at all, at all, at all. But I'm just happy I didn't get so wrapped up in everything. And while I recognized it was going to be such a special day, what I'm more looking forward to is just my life with Zach. Like that's really what it comes down to. That's what it's all about. Us being together, celebrating with all of these people we love. So yeah, those are all of my little tips or things I'm really happy we did. I am losing my voice, guys. I'm gonna cut out all the pauses. I had to pause so many times where I could barely speak um, because I just filmed my regrets video right before this. So I've been sitting in front of the camera for an hour straight and I'm struggling. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I can certainly do more videos just with little tips and tricks that I learned throughout the wedding planning process. So definitely be sure to subscribe for more videos all about just life and also life after the wedding. I mean, that's another big thing. That's for a whole separate video, but you're obviously putting so much time and energy into this one day and then you wake up and then it's over and then what? Which is another reason I'm happy I didn't put so much into this wedding. But anyway, that's for a whole nother topic. I'm gonna go, starting to get hungry, gonna go make lunch, but I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.